Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another episode of Rare Plant Index. If this is your first time watching a Rare Plant Index, this is basically a series in which I take a type of plant and I categorize it anywhere from uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and if applicable, holy. A lot of people that watch this series do tend to find it useful to have a notepad and a pen handy just in case there's anything that interests you and there's anything you'd like to write down just so you can google it later. Now you've seen the title, you know that we've been here before. This was actually my first rare plant index that I ever did as it happens. A lot and I mean a lot has changed since that first rare plant index I did though. I mean so many plants that are really rare on that index are now much easier to find so I thought it'd be a great idea to kind of do an updated video but wait because this video does not repeat any of the plants in the last video minus the holy category probably for obvious reasons so anything you saw in that past video if you have indeed saw that you will not see the same plants again in this video there will be no repeats I just really wanted to do this because philodendron are one of the most popular types of house plants so it really does make sense since the old video you know it, a lot of it's not that useful anymore more. So I'm going to cover, I think it's somewhere between 40 and 45 philodendron today. A quick disclaimer because I love throwing it out before every video just in case anybody jumps down my throat. When I'm talking about rarity in the context of this video I'm kind of more talking about commercial rarity, more specifically kind of commercial availability. So basically how easy it is to acquire these plants on the market. Furthermore, what is rare for me in you know my country, I'm in England, might not be rare for you. So there might be a plant that is just so rare for us in the UK or the EU that is really quite common in, you know, America, the USA, Canada. Please do keep that in mind and treat this as a kind of general guide rather than absolute gospel on, you know, what is rare in your area and what isn't. So I think we should just get straight into it, to be honest. And what I like to do nowadays that I did not do in the first Rare Plant Index I ever did was to feature a couple of plants that are considered very common just so if you don't know anything about philodendron and you're watching this for the first time and you want to know what's good, you can easily familiarize yourself with stuff you may have seen in nurseries or you may have seen in shops. Okay, let's go. So a couple of common philodendron just to help you get, you know, situated. And first up, we have the wonderful, the amazing philodendron scandens. Now, this plant is just adorable. It is very simplistic. It's very easy to get. You can either have it climbing up a pole or what I like to do with mine, I like to have mine trailing. It's just a really pretty plant. It's green hearts and it's a viner. There's, there's nothing to not really like about it in my opinion. You can pick this up nearly anywhere. Like this is not a difficult one to get. This is probably one of the most common philodendron there are and I would like to say that goes for pretty much everybody. Another common philodendron, there, there are a few to pick but I picked this one and that is the philodendron imperial green. Now this is another common philodendron. There's nothing necessarily special about this, no disrespect to it, there's nothing necessarily going on. These can get quite big and I've seen them in you know a lot of plant shops and you can either have them in small little tufts or you can actually grow these out quite big. Can't knock them, really can't knock them. I don't really see people owning these though and I honestly think that's just because of the sheer amount of choice with philodendron that you can get but it is very common, you can pick it up. But that's not really why you're here is it? It's not. It's really not. So the first plant I have in common, and remember none of this is a repeat from you know the initial rare plant index I did on philodendron. I'll link that below if you'd like to see that and you haven't seen that but starting off this is the philodendron squamiferum. This is genuinely, it's a pretty good plant if you're a fan of the fuzz. Now this is going to crop up a lot in this list just to let you know but these plants have very like fuzzy, we'll just call it fuzzy for now instead of hairy, it makes more sense, very fuzzy petioles so that's not necessarily going to be something that everyone's going to love, don't get me wrong. But the plant also has a really nice shape so I think that does kind of soften the blow if you're a bit like Ugh about the fuzzy stems. You're probably going to want to put this up a pole and that also might be a slight theme in this video to be quite honest with you. It's cute. I wouldn't have it because I have other similar plants to this kind of that kind of float my boat a little bit more but it's a nice one. The next plant I have on my list for uncommon might surprise one or two of you. I don't know how this is going to go down but I have next the philodendron birkin. Now I know these went a little bit nuts on Instagram last year, they went a little bit crazy to say the least, 
that's kind of not the case anymore. I feel like they got mass produced like really, really quickly. So these aren't anywhere near as difficult to find as they were last year. It's kind of unique. I'm looking at a picture now on my phone. They have white veining on the leaves, but it's almost like it's been sketched out. Like it, it's really hard to explain. It, you're either going to like it or dislike it, I think. I don't think there's going to be an in-betweener on this. It seems to be reasonably compact, which I think would probably turn a lot of people on because not everyone likes, you know, big, aroidy, long leaf, that kind of thing. They prefer more compact plants. So in that sense, it's a really, really nice one to pick. Next on the list for in common is the Philodendron bipenifolium, which honestly is another good one that is a good viner for a pole. And I must let you know right now, there is a kind of a yellow version of this. So that might be something you want to look for. I think it's Bipenifolium aurea on the internet. Those leaves basically start um, yellow and then they come into green. So if you want something with like a little bit extra on this plant, that's a really, really nice one. I think I featured this in a video last week and there's a few people saying, you know, it's very rude. And I mean, I think that speaks more about your mind than mine. I don't really look at that. I don't really look at the leaves and think, hmm, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Next on my list for Uncommon, and I did have one of these last year, and I really, really, really miss it, if I'm totally honest, and that is the Philodendron Golden Dragon. So this has a really cool leaf shape. I don't know why they call it a golden dragon. I don't know if it's because of the leaf shape. I don't know if the leaves are supposed to represent like dragon's heads, maybe. Maybe that's why. Maybe that makes sense. I don't know. But I can confirm it's very easy to grow. It's very humidity tolerant. It never gave me any trouble when I owned it, genuinely. It's really fun to watch it grow as well just because the leaf shape is that cool. I would definitely put that up there in like, you know, plants with interesting leaf shapes that you might want to have. Plus, it's kind of affordable, so they're not insanely difficult to find, at least to my knowledge anyway. Next plant on my list, I'm not the biggest fan of this. Just gonna be honest. This is the Philodendron angustilobum. And it's just not for me. I don't I don't really know why. I don't think I love this like tri-leaf kind of thing that's kind of going around with some philodendron. I don't know why, it's just not for me. I don't dig it as much as I dig other types of philodendron. But this one is a climber. And of course, once again, you can therefore grow it up a pole, which is great for space saving. It's just a bit average for me. It looks the same as another philodendron you know, later down this list. But I actually think that the other philodendron later down this list just looks a little bit better than this one. So if I had to pick from the two, I kind of would pick the one that's coming up a little bit later. The next one on my list, and I do quite like this one, which surprises me actually, but this is the philodendron tortum. Now I do like this one, again, not quite as much as another one on my list, but I do like it. It's kind of like a philodendron, but it's crossed with a palm. So if you kind of like palm trees and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like philodendron, I'm obsessed with palms, definitely get this one because it's probably gonna be a really nice crossover plant for you. The petioles and the leaves on this plant emerge like a really pretty pink color. And I highly advise you to Google it because because it's genuinely very pretty and it's very delicate and just, it's lovely. So I think that might sway you if you don't know if you like it or not. Really, really funky leaves. There's not many philodendron, in my opinion, that look quite like this. So I think this might be a case of, you know, you need to see it in person to see if you like it. I quite like it. Oh, are we out of Uncommon already? I think we are. We are, we're out of Uncommon already. Okay, so first up, in the rare category, I have the Philodendron Majesty. Now, honestly, I don't know if pictures do this plant justice and people that own a Philodendron Majesty might agree with me there because this is just the sexiest plant, honestly. Like if Batman was low key, like into his Philodendron, this would be like the thing to have. Like, just trust me on that because the foliage is like, it comes through a super dark burgundy color some lights it looks burgundy, some lights it looks black. It's just such a statement plant. When the leaves come through, they get like a little bit brighter, so a bit more of a brighter burgundy. Not only that, but the stems. Oh my God, the stems. The stems are almost like matte black. It's matte, like this whole plant is matte and it's lovely. I don't see many plants like that. So this one to me is quite special. And I honestly think I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that anyone that sees this in person that likes dark foliage, would really, really be quite taken with it. Okay, next on my list for rare is quite a popular philodendron. I'm not gonna lie. And it's popular for one or two reasons. So this is the philodendron atabapoense. 
And this plant can sometimes be confused with a juvenile philodendron spiritus sancti, which we will get to later, trust me. I can kind of see why this is if you look at a picture of a Natabapuensi and you look at a picture of a juvenile spiritus. I kind of get it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of get it. So these leaves are pretty long and pretty thin. So there's one, you know, starting point. They have really pointy lobes or ears on the leaf as well, so that's super nice. And the backs of these leaves are like the most beautiful burgundy red, but it's really quite a bright red, which is super, super nice. Just trust me, just trust me, they're really, really nice plants. In my experience, they're not fussy and again, they're pretty easy to grow. But as are most philodendrons, and until you get to the like super ridiculous fussy ones, most philodendrons, you're not going to have too much issue there. It's nice. Um, I did mention this in a philodendron spiritus sancti dupes video, which I'll link below if you haven't seen it and you're interested and you want to look for a philodendron spiritus sancti, but no way in hell are you paying that price tag. That's quite a good video to watch, so I'll link that down below. Okay, next on the list, this is 100% recommended by me, and it's 100% a favorite, and I have one here. I will show you it in just a second, but this is the philodendron Jose Bono. So imagine, if you can, a Monstera Thai constellation crossed with something with massive leaves. Massive long leaves at that. They're really, really cool plants. Like if you're looking for something that you want to buy a large plant of, you don't really get too much resistance when you're looking on the market for these. You can get big specimens. So you don't have to grow them out from a small one. I will grab the one I have. It's not looking like the best because it needs groomed. It needs a lot of things doing to it. But this is actually from my shop. This, hopefully my microphone doesn't catch it and hopefully you can get it in the frame. This is Philodendron Jose Bono. So it's got these wonderful big paddly leaves and it's got obviously chunks of variegation. But if you look, sorry, this one is probably a little bit dirty and it's got soil on it because I tipped something on it before. If you look, you can see that the variegation is kind of reminiscent of a Monstera Thai constellation. I don't know how obvious that is to see, but that's her. She's very, very nice. This one obviously needs a little bit of work. It needs a bit of a trim. It probably needs propped. It's a bit ridiculous, but I love her all the same. She normally lives in my shop, so I've actually brought her over today just for this video. I'm going to pop her back now. So I actually recommend those really, really highly. I don't think they're insanely difficult to get. I do think as of recording this video that they are quite fashionable at the minute, so. So the next plant I have on my list for you is the Philodendron Orange Marmalade. Now imagine a Philodendron Painted Lady crossed with a Philodendron Prince of Orange, and that's kind of what you're getting with this plant. <laughs> I don't know if this is a hybrid. That honestly makes me think it's a hybrid of the two plants. And as of recording this, I don't know if it's a hybrid. I feel like if you love Philodendron Painted Lady and you're looking for one and you're looking for a Prince of Orange, if you don't have much space, you could just smush them together and get this one. I know that's a little bit of a simplistic approach and not necessarily the collector's approach, but I feel like if you like, you know, both of those plants, you're going to like this. I don't love the way that it variegates. Like I liked Painted Lady back in the day, but I've kind of gone off it a little bit. I just, I don't know. I don't like the way it variegates, but it's nice. I can totally see why a lot of people would want this based on obviously the Prince of Orange and the Painted Lady. Okay, I've got another goth plant. I've got another goth plant and this is the philodendron red heart. This foliage is, it's super dark. It's not black, but obviously it's almost black. So it's like a super, super dark green. If you photograph it in a certain way, you can get it to look black pretty easily. In fact, most of the images I see of this plant look pretty black. It's like something out of Maleficent or something. It's not for me and that's actually not due to the color. It's more due to the growth pattern, but I totally get why someone that likes dark foliage would be going for this. It's got like a really cool red flush down the center of the leaf there. So let me know what you think of this in the comments, either as a plant goth or not as a plant goth. I'm kind of curious to see what people think of this. It's not for me. Again, growth pattern. It's not actually the foliage, it's the growth pattern, but I'm sure loads of people are looking for this or loads of people would have this, so. Okay, the next plant I have for you guys is 100% a favorite of mine. I saw this last year and I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I know a lot of people were kind of divided over this, again, for the reasons that are about to become obvious. But this is the Philodendron Serpents. And as I say, the really hairy stems are not going to be loved by everybody. Personally, I love the fuzz. It's great. I'm all for it. And it feels absolutely awesome when you touch it. But I know 
but again, it, it freaks a lot of people out. So if you're looking for this plant, you are doing so 100% because of the stems, because honestly, the leaves aren't really much to write home about. They're pretty simplistic. As with a lot of plants that have fuzzy stems, the leaves are often simplistic, in my experience. I don't know, I feel like this one could go either way. Definitely for me, yes. I just love the fuzzy stems. I think they're great, but I get that not everyone's gonna like this. Next up on my list, and I have one of these here to show you, sort of, this is the Philodendron Lupinum. Now then, I will go over this as quickly as I can because I covered this in a video last week, but Philodendron Lupinum is a plant that will change just so much over time. So it starts out a little bit more like a Philodendron Micans almost, kind of, not the same. But when it gets older, that lovely velvetiness and the burgundy backs on the plant, uh, they, they completely just disappear. And the plant gets like this amazing pointed lobey kind of situation, kind of moment going on. And it, all the velvetiness is gone, it looks glossy. So this plant goes through such a journey and I think it's going to be popular this year based on how, you know, how much it changes. I feel like obviously, you know, you love watching your houseplants. It's a great journey to witness. So for that reason, I think it's going to be popular. I'll grab one right now because I have it here. Let me just take that off so it's not noisy. This here is Philodendron lupinum. So if I show you that, say that the leaves are very soft and very velvety, almost micansy, but not quite. And then underneath you have this amazing you know, burgundy backing. I feel like if you're looking for one of these right now, as of recording this video, you're gonna find specimens more like the one I've just showed you than the mature one. Obviously the mature specimens are coming. They just haven't been kind of grown out yet in nurseries. Very cute and very interesting plants though. Okay, next on, oh, I've got this one as well, so I'll show you this one. The next on my list is the Philodendron L Choco Red. Now, this is not too insane to get. They're in very high demand at the minute, but honestly, it's kind of easy to see why. So I'll pick one up in just a second, but they have the most beautiful dark velvety, you know, leaves, and the backs of the leaves are like this lovely flush pink color, and the caterpillars come in very, very bright, like hot pink. So all around, this plant's just like, I see why people are going a little bit nuts for it. I'll get one now. Here is mine, mine is growing. So you've got, mine doesn't have that many leaves. It's got four leaves. It's got another one coming in on the way. I will see if I can hold this up. This is super difficult by the way. That's the leaf that's coming in right now. As you can see, they come in this beautiful pink color. That's the back of the leaves while I'm on. Beautiful flush of red. And the front, which is much easier to show you, looks a bit more like that really dark, pretty foliage. I'll be honest, I get the hype. They're just lovely plants, they really are. I honestly think I would describe this plant as an all-rounder. It just satisfies most people's wants. So no wonder it's popular, if I'm totally honest. I, you just have to see them in person to be like, yeah, okay, it's got everything, you know? Oh God, I've got this one as well. Where did this one go? I don't know where this one is. The next plant on my list for rare is the Philodendron 69686. This plant is a kind of dupe for a much more rare plant that is obviously coming further down the list. It's kind of nice. It's not for everybody. It's another one of these plants where the shape, you're either gonna like it or not like it. You're either gonna get it or you're gonna do, you know, like a hard pass. This is the Philodendron 69686. This is one from my shop that hasn't quite been sold yet. It's not quite ready. It's getting there. It's not quite ready. We need to wait a little bit longer, but it's very cute. Again, not for everybody, totally get it. It's another Philodendron that's into the whole, you know, tri leaf kind of thing going on, the kind of vibe. If you collect this kind of thing and you didn't know about this, then this is 100% one to go for as well. All right, please let this be a plant I don't have. Okay, it is. <laughs> this is the Philodendron Bernardo Patsii. This one is quite nice and I can honestly see why. It's got really, really long kind of glossy leaves, which is very nice. It's got very bright veining as well, which is also very nice. I did mention this in my Spiritus Dupes video. Again, link down below if you want to see that. And it's quite cool actually, because in that video, I cover what happens when you grow this plant under different conditions, because you can kind of slim down the leaves a little bit. You can technically change how this, and to be fair, all plants, you can change how they grow according to different conditions. So if you're interested in that, have a look down below. Next on my list, we have the Philodendron Sharonii. Now this Philodendron has some quite nice long leaves. 
And if you are familiar with Anthurium vicii, then you're probably going to relate to the ribbed aspect of this plant. It's kind of got abs, not like Anthurium vicii levels of abs, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of got abs. So if you love that, then you're going to love this. I don't know how desirable these are though, because honestly, I'm not seeing them pop up that much. I know that they're, they're, you know, they're circulating, but I don't think that they're in demand generally. Moving on, this is a very interesting one. We have the Philodendron Jungle Fever. So I'm pretty sure I did see this a lot on my recent trip to Thailand. So this plant is going to hit nurseries more than it has done this year. It's not new, but it's going to hit the nurseries a lot more this year. I've seen different images of this plant though, and this is what confuses me ever so slightly. Some images of this plant look from, you know, mainly lime green, to like a, a blocky green and yellow or a blocky green and lime kind of variegation. So I don't know if that means that variegation fades down. That's what it's suggesting to me. I'm not schooled on this plant, so I don't actually have that information for you. I'm very sorry, but it is a cool plant and I do get why people kind of like this. It's very obvious to me. Not only that, but the leaves, the shape of them kind of look a lot like a lot of alocasia. So if you're into alocasia and you want something like this, to me, this looks very nice. It reminds me of like alocasia calidora or something similar to that. Very, very nice. I don't fully know how the variegation works. So if you know, please feel free to comment that below. Um, I just, I didn't have time to look into it you know, in depth. So please let me know down below what the score is with this plant, what the scoop is. Next up, we have the Philodendron Bobsy. And this is another plant that in my humble opinion, I feel like you're either gonna love it or you're gonna just be like, heck no, I have no time for that. I've said this last week, obviously as well, but this plant is starting to become a bit more fashionable this year. It is kind of like a bit of a buzz, not a buzzword, but like a buzz plant that's kind of been mentioned a lot on Facebook and Instagram, etc. So you might see it kind of poking around the internet a little bit. I think when the leaves get mature, they look pretty awesome. I've only really seen younger specimens in person, so that might be why I don't buzz over it. But I know a lot of people are looking for it right now. I'm sure that I read a comment on my video last week, someone saying, oh my God, it's gorgeous. Next on my list, we have the Philodendron Maximum. Now I can only assume that this gets its name from its size, because if you Google this shit, literally, the plants that come up are like bigger than people. The leaves are bigger than people, and it's really the coolest thing. You've got to be looking for this if you want something to grow, you know, of size. That's why you're looking for this plant if it's, you know, something you are hunting for. Other than that, in my opinion, it's just not that striking. Like in the world of philodendron, I don't find it that striking. It does have nice big paddle-shaped leaves, which obviously is pretty nice. But as I've said before, I think this is a size thing. I think you're buying this for the size. Next on the list is a little bit similar to a philodendron we mentioned before, the philodendron angustilobum. And it's a little bit similar to philodendron 69686 which I showed you before. And that is the Philodendron Tripartitum. As I've said, this Philodendron is similar to some others. I'm not wowed by it. So, and that's based on my knowledge that, you know, I can see a Philodendron 696 in person. I can't imagine this one differs that much, to be honest. So if you are obsessed with this leaf shape and you are a collector, then yeah, get on it. You know, if you're looking to just fill your house with this kind of thing, then absolutely add this one. But I don't know how desired these are. I really don't know. I, mm, I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Oh, we're in very rare. We're out of rare now. Okay, so I want to see a lot more of this plant on the internet. I want to make it my mission to find this plant this year. This first up on my list for very rare is the Philodendron Red Moon. Now, I recently sold one of these in my shop. Um, I think it was a couple of months ago. And I only had one in because you can't find them unless there's just something I'm not seeing on the internet, you can't really find them. I feel like last year they kind of made an appearance on Facebook and there, it was like there was just one batch released and then they just disappeared. And I haven't really seen them since. So these leaves, as you may be able to see, are really funky because they emerge a yellow color and they have like red variegation. These are just the coolest things. Honestly, these are the coolest things. The variegation will remain there. The red will remain. Um, again, I, I just want to see them emerge. I don't know where they've gone. If you know where they've gone, let me know. I'll happily try and look for some. But yeah, really unique. Very, very, very cool watching new leaves come out. If you're someone that just gets off on watching new leaves unfurl, this 100% is something you're going to want to look for. You, you need to Google this right now. Because honestly, I don't think you can get bored of watching new leaves come out on this. Next on the list for very rare, and again, 
not everyone's cup of tea because the leaves are pretty simplistic and the party is in the back, as I like to say, or the party is in the petiole. But this is Philodendron Alatium gelatum. So it's, it's good if you don't like hairy stems, but you want to plant with statement stems. This, this is a candidate because when this plant gets mature, not so much when it's younger, but when it gets mature, it gets this like, it's like a ruffle trim that goes all the way down the petiole. It's really, really funky. I don't know, to my knowledge of many other philodendron, if any, that do this same thing. So if you're looking for like a statement ruffly stem, you're gonna wanna look this up. It's really, really nice. Oh my goodness me. Next on the list, this seems to be pretty sought after. I, I don't know why. I hope that you guys can tell me why in the comments. Because this is Philodendron Holtonianum. Again, it's another Philodendron with this kind of tri-leaf kind of shape going on. They look, in the picture I'm looking at, they, the leaves look a little bit more undular, so a little bit more like wavy than the other leaves that we've mentioned so far. I feel like when they're juvenile as well, they look much different to this. They look much slimmer and much thinner and much flatter. So I don't know. If you could tell me why this is undergoing a lot of hype at the minute, please do, because I'm curious. Like, there might be something that I'm just missing, you know, missing the ball on. I don't get it. There are other plants that are less rare than this that don't seem to be that popular, but this one does. So following on from that, oh, <laughs> I've got an opinion on these. This is the Philodendron Paraiso Verde. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Not 100%. Unpopular opinion incoming, but I don't like them. I just... I don't like them. Honestly, I don't like the way they grow. I think they grow very, very messy. They get really big paddle-shaped leaves, which is great, but they, the petioles are so like slim and long and it's just, I just find it a very messy plant. Like it doesn't have a good, I want to say stance. And I know that's probably not going to make sense to anybody unless, to be honest, you've either seen a lot of pictures of these or you own one. But it just looks a little bit messy to me. Not only that, but I don't, I don't live for the type of variegation that they have. Again, unpopular opinion, I know, because I know that these plants are kind of, they're not taking the market by storm, but a lot of people are looking for them. It's just not my cup of tea. So please don't hate, but I don't dig them. But what is my cup of tea? Okay. Can we just say, I've got the face on, which means I like it. This is the Philodendron Dark Lord, and it's just, it's just sexy. I guess this is just what I'm into, right? So a lot of people dig this plant, and I do get it. The leaves on this plant are really, like, they're heart-shaped, but they're like a goth version of a heart-shaped, so they're super, super pointy. Not only that, but they come, they emerge a really strong burgundy colour, which is always nice. I can see what the hype is about. They do fade to a super dark green, so, you know, they're not going to stay burgundy, but I like them. I really, really do. And the petioles there, or the catafils, look brightly coloured as well, which is always a nice little pop when you're growing your plants out. I do get why they call this Dark Lord. I do. I feel like, you know, if Voldemort saw this in a plant shop, he'd be kind of like, hmm. This is the Philodendron Lynn Hanonii, and this is my old friend. If any of you remember last year when I launched my shop, I don't think it was straight away. It was a little bit later on. I launched some beautiful philodendron linhanonii, and they are gorgeous, don't get me wrong. But I've also done a video on these things. So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, these plants actually featured in a video of my anxiety-inducing houseplants, which probably tells you everything you need to know. I'm not trying to put you off from buying this, but I'm pretty sure for every plant of these that I shipped out last year, I issued a full refund, like, when they got to the other end, because they just did not ship. They're so finicky, honestly. But it's a shame because they are heart-shaped and they have a really lovely like corrugated like effect on the leaf but in my experience and I said this in my other video corrugated plants do pose a little bit of a problem usually not always but usually you can expect maybe to have a few issues with it so beautiful plant totally get why you'd want it in my experience it's been shit I love it honestly great plant but just be prepared to put a shift in when you look after it Next on my list for very rare is the Philodendron Longilobatum Lelanomiano. I love that name. <laughs> it's just such a cool name. So again, this plant featured in another video of mine. I will link it down below. But this is really cool. I think, if I'm correct, no two leaves on this plant are the same. 
So what you get with one leaf, it's not going to be the same to the next leaf, which in my opinion makes it really cool. It's not cool if you like the one leaf that appeared on Google, but it is cool if you want some variety and you like to be kept entertained by your plants, because I feel like a lot of people do. I feel like that's a good reason why, you know, a lot of people are into Calathea and things like that, because they move and all the rest. So if you want to be entertained, this probably is quite a nice one for you to try. Next on the list, I think I have one here with me. I will have to seek it out. Where is it? Oh, it's down there. Okay, I found it. The next plant on my list is the Philodendron gigas. Now then, this is interesting to me. And I only found this out like yesterday, to be honest. So Philodendron gigas start out, and I'll show you mine in a second. They start out a little bit more like Philodendron melanochrysum, but a little bit more floppy and the leaves aren't really like an elongated heart. They're round at the top, kind of like, not quite like Anthurium forgetii, but they don't really have lobes as such. They're just totally round. Now, when these get bigger, they keep the roundness on the top and they obviously just get a little bit longer, kind of like a melanochrysum. But what I didn't factor for, what I didn't genuinely didn't know, when you see these mature, they do go back to like a heart shape. It's a very elongated heart shape, but they do get it. And that just surprised me because I assumed that the, you know, the lack of lobes would just kind of stay there because I've seen some quite large gigas. I've seen gigas with leaves like this long and they haven't developed that heart shape. So that's really interesting to me. I'll show you the one I have. Again, it's just a baby, so, but you can, you get the idea. Personally, I think if you're looking for something like this, in my personal opinion, I prefer melanochrysum because I think it's tougher and it just looks that little bit nicer but I will show you it anyway. This here, see if I can cover my face with it, is Philodendron gigas. So you can see it is similar to a melanochrysum in the leaf there. And if I turn it back around, I don't know how well you can see that, but it is kind of burgundy. And like melanochrysum, these leaves do emerge burgundy when they're kind of unfurling. So it is cute in that sense. This one obviously should be climbing and it's not. It's decided it's going to grow that way and up. So that's kind of interesting. But you see what I mean? I, I It's not... I don't know, I just prefer melanochrysum. Don't get me wrong, I think if you love melanochrysum, absolutely pick it up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you want one or the other, maybe, maybe go for melano. I don't know. If Obviously, if you're a collector, you're gonna get them both, but it's just kind of my opinion on it. I think that melanos just look that little bit nicer. Don't get me wrong, this isn't really the specimen to kind of show you that, but they're pretty cute. I'll show you again just quickly, just so you can see how nice they are and what a cute shine they've got on them, because they are very nice. Leaves are very long, they get longer quicker, I will say that much. Gigas compared to Melano, the leaves will elongate much faster, so that's a plus point for sure. This is the Philodendron Luxurians in Very Rare. Now, they're lovely plants, don't get me wrong, but they're a little bit fussy, and I know that a few people that, are, that do own these at the minute have said the same thing. I will say one thing, these are the most thirsty philodendron I think I've ever kept. I'll pick mine up in just a second. To a large extent, for me, and I'm not trying to dissuade people from buying it, but they're a lot more expensive than the philodendron El Choco Red, and they're just a lot more fussy. For me, I think if you're, again, this is the same thing as I said about the Gigas, if you're looking to collect all of that type of plant, then yeah, you know, get both hunt for this. If you're just looking for something like this and you like the vibe, you might just be fine with a choco. This one does grow a bit differently. No, where is it gone? Mine's kind of, it's not looking the best, this claimer, and it's pointing downwards. That's because it's kind of sitting at the back of my window and it's just the way that it's pointing towards the light. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just grown kind of funky, but I'll get mine for you now. <sighs> Come on, girly. So this is Philodendron Luxuriance. I do have a new leaf coming in right here. And these are the leaves that I currently have. So they're not looking the best. This uh, unfurled with humidity a little bit too low. It happened when I was transporting the plant from my shop to here. So that's what that is, but it's a new leaf. At least it's quite fat. These are the other leaves. Again, not looking unbelievable. They are very, very fussy. This plant doesn't really like to be left alone. It doesn't seem to like drafts very much. Just a bit of a diva. They are worth it. Don't get wrong, they're gorgeous. They're very nice though. Let me just show you. Close up, like so. The veins are very cool, the veins are very pronounced. By all means, if you're looking for one of these, do pick one up. But if you're not sure and you just want something with dark velvety foliage, honestly, the Choco is just as good. It really is. Okay, okay, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Next one in very rare is the Philodendron polypoidioides? What is that? Philodendron polypoidioides. Polypoidioides, is that right? 
So I didn't think I was going to like these, but I kind of do. I feel like when I look at this, or at least the image I'm looking at right now, it's almost like if Tim Burton owned a Florida, a philodendron Florida or something like that, it's like a goth nightmare before Christmas version of a philodendron Florida. And I'm kind of here for it. I kind of am. I, I want to see this in person. I want to see it in person to check because this plant does look a little bit wispy. I'm calling it wispy, just not bushy. Um, and in my experience, I don't tend to gravitate towards stuff like that. I'd rather have a palm or a fern. I will reserve judgment until I see it in person. It does look very cool. And again, I don't think this is for everybody. I don't think everyone is going to love this plant. I think it's just going to depend a little bit. Oh, uh, next on my list for very rare is the Philodendron Esmeraldensi. And this is such a beautiful plant. And I've actually wanted this plant for a long time. I haven't bothered mentioning it on my wish list just because I find that they're kind of not difficult to care for. They're just not the easiest things in the world to care for. Not only that, but it's like my melanocrysum situation, which basically means I want to wait for a large one, a mature one. I don't want to get a younger one. I've sold younger ones in my shop before. That's kind of not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a really big one. The majority of sellers that I've seen personally are selling more juvenile ones. So if you do want a more mature one, good luck. Uh, I genuinely hope you find one. I'm not actively looking, but impressive to me when they're small, but they're really, I mean, I don't think we can argue about that. When they get big, they get awesome. Like they really get awesome. That's a nice ass plant. Next on my list is a plant that honestly, I just didn't know about. I really didn't. This one, I don't think it's had a lot of press, but it is quite rare. Next on my list is the Philodendron Camposbotoanum. So this one interests me quite a lot because it reminds me in some pictures. It reminds me of a Philodendron Micans, but it's just kind of got ears on it. I'm interested in seeing this one in person, but again, I feel like I might not find it in person because it, I've just never heard of it. So if you Google this plant, I don't know what color I should be saying this plant is because it looks so different in all the images. So if you own this plant or you've seen it in person or anything like that, if you could tell me what color it actually is, that would be helpful because some images it looks dark, some images it looks more lime green, some images it looks velvety, some images not quite. So I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on with this plant, but it is very cool and I've never seen it before. So obviously I had to include it. Ooh, last one in very rare. And again, fuzz lovers, you're gonna love it. You're gonna be shook. This is the Philodendron Fibrosum. So this has really nice big heart-shaped leaves, but again, similar to the Serpens, similar to, you know, Alatium dilatum, the leaves don't really have that much going for them. There's nothing unbelievable about them, in my opinion. The party is in the petiole. <laughs> That's gonna be like a slogan, I don't know. If, again, if you like the fuzz, you're gonna love it. If you're collecting fuzzy things, you're gonna love it, you're gonna want it. It's nice. I do think it's just gonna divide people just due to that reason, but I know at the minute I'm seeing people look for this. I am seeing the name pop up a lot on Facebook and on Instagram, so I do think this is coming into fashion a little bit more. I might get it, I don't know. I want to see it, but I might get it. We'll see what happens. Let's kick off the extremely rare category. This is the Philodendron Patricii, and it's lovely. It's a lovely plant. Don't get me wrong. This plant is so gorgeous, but it's a tall diva. Like, really? Like, really? They, these plants just give me anxiety. So much so that they also featured in my anxiety-inducing plants video, as it happens. Um, they cost a lot to find. They're, they're not cheap. They're really not cheap. In my experience, it is super difficult to find one with long mature leaves. If you get one, you're getting them juvenile and they don't really have the ruffles or the, the ribs or whatever you want to call them down the front of the leaf, from what I've seen anyway. So if you're looking for one of these, I would be expecting to grow it out. And when you do grow them out, you will find that they are not the easiest of things to grow. Again, in my experience. So somebody else could be a whiz with these. I found them pretty difficult. Next on the list for extremely rare, this is the Philodendron Jerry Horn. Yes, I like this plant. This, I believe, is a hybrid of Philodendron bipenifolium and Philodendron atapacuense. I don't know if that's confirmed or not. I'm pretty sure it is, not 100%. This plant does go by a couple of different names, but for now I'm sticking with Jerry Horn. This philodendron might give you slight Spirit of Sancti vibes, and I happen to agree <laughs> because it's also in my Spirit of Sancti Jupes video. Sorry for dropping videos on everybody, but it's a philodendron video, and so many of my videos are on philodendron lately, it's kind of crazy. So this is nice. I am definitely 100% seeing now, as of very recently, 
I'm seeing this one pop up on Facebook and Instagram and the like. People are hunting for this. So expect to see this more on the internet. Expect to see more photographs of it passed around between people. I'm pretty sure people are looking for this. I can see why. I'm looking for it too. I'm going to be totally honest. I quite like it. Next on the list, and I do happen to have this one with me. I actually have the one from my shop with me, so I'm actually quite excited to show you this because you've never seen this since I bought it. This is the Philodendron UPI. This is a very, very rare Philodendron, and the demand for this has gone through the roof. I can see this all over Facebook. Everybody's seeming to want these. It's, and I'll, I'll grab it for you in a second, it's a pretty unusual plant. I feel like this is another Marmite plant. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. It's got a certain look to it and not everyone is going to love this. Yeah, so I got mine at the International Allied Show last year and it is massive. It didn't do brilliant um, getting it back to the UK. It's done okay. So it's kind of got one big leaf and I had another leaf on it that was growing in and it kind of, it didn't unfurl properly. It wasn't humid enough. But it's got a new leaf coming in as we speak, but I will grab it for you now. Again, this ain't small. This is not small. This is my Philodendron UPI and it's probably going to drip on me. Let me see if I can head test it because it's so difficult. Literally, this is the size of my UPI. This is ridiculous how big this plant is. Obviously, that's the pot that it's in. So you know it's got, you know, it's got some gains. What I'm saying about the leaf shape is obviously this is not everybody's cup of tea. And I totally get it. I mean, this, this is weird. Do you know what I'm saying? It's weird. But it is very sore after. Um, that's where the leaf didn't unfurl properly and it snapped. This is a new leaf coming in, which is smaller than that one. But it has been moved to a new position in my shop. So that is why you haven't seen it. I have had it the whole time. It is rather large. She cute. Not for everyone, but she cute. Oh, that was the last of Extremely Rare because so many philodendron are kind of coming onto the market now. It's hard to find Extremely Rare ones, if I'm totally honest with you. That only leaves one plant and I may as well put this away. So the last plant we have left, if you don't already know, is the holy category, which does not always apply to uh, a certain type of plant. Like Monstera has a holy category, you know, as a general consensus, philodendron does. Alocasia doesn't necessarily, for example. Um, Peperomia doesn't necessarily, for example. It just depends. But this plant is considered the holy grail of philodendron, and the name kind of adds to that. I have one here. I'm going to pick it up in a second. But this is the philodendron spiritus sancti. Now, I know I said I wouldn't repeat names from one rare plant index to another, but in this case, it's still top dog for philodendron. So I'm going to pick it up and show you. Um, I know that people that have watched my channel for a while know and have followed this little dude for a little while, but this is a juvenile, juvenile um, philodendron spiritus sancti. I'll try and hold on to this the best I can. So this is one leaf here. This is a leaf he was shipped with, so it's not like immaculate. All of these leaves nearly on the front have grown since. Grown in different conditions. This one's grown in all fat, but the lobes are kind of there. You can see here. He is his cute little lobe. Look how long he is. I may as well take the opportunity to let you know that these plants since kind of late last year have, uh, have gone up in price quite a bit. I couldn't hope to get a plant like this for the price that I paid last year. And I paid a lot last year. Um, I paid basically 2,000 pounds last year. Um, and they've, the price has probably gone up. Not only that, but I think this plant here is probably potentially triple the value. And I, I'm not just saying that um, because it has three growth points in the Spirit of Sancti. So I'll try and show the growth points there for you. But you should be able to see, I'll just gently rotate it. You should be able to see three um, caterpillars there on the plant. So that's kind of awesome. No, I'm not cutting it. That's not going to happen. It's going to stay the way it is. It's got a hell of a root system. I know this might seem like it's a big pot, but the root system on this is ridiculous. But that's her. That's Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Again, so many people are looking for these now. It is why I brought out the dupes video um, a few weeks ago, just to help alleviate, you know, the thirst for Spiritus, because I know that they're not easy to get. If you do want one of these, but you just, you just not go in there, then please check out the video that I linked in the description. But yeah, this little holy, nothing much has changed. If anything, the value's just kind of gone boom. Tough to propagate as well. I know a few people are having trouble uh, propagating these. The, the loss rate, shall we say, is very high. I spoke to a few different collectors about this. So that's not going to make them come onto the market any quicker. 
There are rumors that Spiritus is being TC'd. I've never seen proof yet. Uh, same as Monstera Oblica, I've never seen the proof. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm just saying I've never seen the proof. I know that Spiritus is not an easy plant to propagate. A few people will tell you that. So I don't know. I guess we just have to sit tight and see if we hear anything, you know, I, but I've yet to see proof. I've heard people saying that it's coming out, but I've not seen any proof of that in any labs. So we'll see what happens. And I guess this concludes the Philodendron 2 Rare Plant Index. I know people might be like, why are you remaking this? But honestly, if you go and watch my old video, it should be quite obvious while I'm remaking this. I get so many comments on the video saying, you know, I bought this plant for like $9.99 in Home Depot. Like, why are you saying it's rare? And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> a lot has changed since I put that video out. Do you know what I mean? A lot has changed. That The entire rare plant market has changed since that video came out. That was before the, the big boom happened. So a lot has changed and I kind of, I wanted to, you know, just basically make something more up to date, but I also didn't want to regurgitate what was in the first one because no one cares how rare, you know, a ring of fire is now compared to what it was or no one cares how much a varicosum is rare compared to how it was. I want to show new things. So that is the reason for that today. Thank you very much for sticking through with it. <laughs> I will leave uh, links to any videos that I've mentioned down below. That would include the Spiritus Sancti Dupes video. That would include the anxiety inducing houseplants video. I will include my old uh, philodendron rare plant index because it's actually adorable. I haven't watched it back, but I know it's before I even knew what a rare plant index was. It was a video that kind of started this whole thing. So it's kind of cute if you really want to go and see it and if you want to see how things have changed. So until the next Rare Plant Index, I will love you and leave you. Please leave your suggestions for things, for plants that you'd like to see me do a Rare Plant Index on in the comments below. Likewise, I do have a playlist on my channel of Rare Plant Indexes. So if you're wondering if I've done a video on something and this is your first Rare Plant Index, please do check that playlist out because I have done a few. Mainly Aroids, but I have done a few. Oh, before I go, just in case anybody asks, this is what is on my eyes at the moment. I got this yesterday and I decided to try it out today. I don't know how I feel about blue eyeshadow yet. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But before anybody asks, this is what is on my eyes. It's the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette. If you want a tutorial, maybe let me know. Maybe I might do it on my second channel. I don't know. I've got like a queue of tutorials that people want. So it'll be in the queue if y'all want it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please feel free to leave a like. It really, really helps me. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be rare plant indexes, anxiety inducing houseplants, story times, rants, plant hauls, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and I will see you next week. Bye guys.